Hello everyone. Um, did you guys see this story? It is coming out of England. This woman was sentenced yes, uh, today, Monday, to life in prison with no chance of release by a judge who highlighted the cruelty and calculation of her actions. So this is according to APNews.com. A former neonatal nurse was sentenced to life in prison for taking the lives of seven babies. I mean, how much more depraved can one person be to take lives of little innocent babies who need someone taking care of them for their every single need? I mean, <laughs> there are some evil people on this earth. According to this uh, article, a former neonatal nurse convicted of taking the lives of seven babies in her care and trying to take the life of six others. I can't say that word K-I-L-L, -L, you guys, but when I say take life, that's what I'm trying to say. Take the lives of six others at a hospital in northern england was sentenced monday to life in prison with no chance of release by a judge who said she was cruel cunning and callous and acted with malevolence bordering sadism not bordering it is was sadism lucy letby who refused to appear in court for sentencing or go face or to face an outpouring of anger and anguish from grieving parents was giving the most severe punishment possible under British law, which does not allow the death penalty. Justice James Goss said the number of, I'm just going to have to say it, killings and attempts and the nature of the murders by a nurse entrusted with caring for the most fragile infants provided the exceptional circumstances required to impose a rare whole life order only three other women have received such a harsh sentence sentence in the uk oh man this is heartbreaking you guys just imagine that you i don't have children but those of you who have given birth mothers who've adopted just imagine your poor innocent baby is already in a neonatal intensive care unit and or you know just in the hospital for whatever reason and the nurse who is supposed to be caring for your little baby and you know helping to bring them out of whatever they're going through so that you can take them home with you and this is what happens you go home without your child and this demon wasn't satisfied with the seven that she was successful at taking the lives of she tried it with others back to the article there was a deep malevolence bordering on sadism in your actions goss said addressing the absent defendant and look she didn't even have you had the balls to do what you did but you can't face those families anyway goss said addressing the absent defendant who will be giving a tran given a transcript of the proceedings during the co course of this trial you have coldly denied any responsibility for your wrongdoing you have no remorse there are no mitigating factors a manchester crown court jury that deliberated 22 days convicted ledby 33 of murdering the seven babies over a year-long period that saw her prey on the vulnerabilities of sick newborns and their anxious parents eight jurors showed up to watch the sentencing in a year time in a year's time one year she took all of those lives 
Let be sickened babies by injecting intravenous lines with air. Oh my God. Poisoning some with insulin and force feeding others milk. Oh Jesus. My heart is breaking. This is horrible. Oh, force feeding. Poisoning them with insulin. Trash. After killing them, she sometimes sometimes sobbed in grief, made mistake made keepsakes for parents and bathed the little bodies and dressed them for burial. The victims who were giving given an anonymity and listed only by letters such as child A and child B died in the neonatal unit at the Countess of Chester Hospital in Northwest England between June 2015 and June 2016. So why did she just get her sentence in 2023? It wasn't swift justice, justice. I can tell you guys that. I don't think we will ever get over the fact that our daughter was tortured till she had no fight left in her and everything she went through over her short life was deliberately done by someone who was supposed to protect her and help her come home where she belonged. The mother of a girl identified as child I child one said in a statement read in court the judge said no one but let me knows what drove her though some parents ventured theories she wanted to play God she needed attention drama and sympathy in her life or she wanted to be remembered prosecutor Nicholas Johnson said let me deserved a whole life tariff for a sadistic conduct and premeditated crimes Defense lawyer Ben Meyer said Letby maintained her innocence and that there was no, nothing he could add that would be able to reduce her sentence. A mother who conceived her twin boys through in vitro fertilization said there were no children in the world more wanted than them and didn't know if she would have others. Letby killed one child E and left child F with learning deficiencies his mother attributes to insulin insulin poisoning well that could be true you guys because if you're given insulin it drops your um you know sugar and your it drops your uh um glucose level and okay I mean, I've been given insulin in a hospital by mistake. I'm not a um, diabetic and I started to sweat like I've been thrown in a pool and I could feel myself fading. My eyes closed and I couldn't hear anything. So it's like you really the only discomfort that I felt was the sweating that and just just not being able to stay awake. And when I woke up, there were doctors, two doctors and a ton of nurses all around me. And they saved my life by giving me glucose. They slammed an IV into my vein and just started giving it to me. And um, I just can't imagine doing something like that to anyone, much less a baby. And so, yeah, she probably left him with, uh, you know, brain damage because he literally was dying. He may have stopped breathing before he was, you know, brought back. So I don't know the whole situation of if he went into cardiac arrest or if he stopped breathing, but it is definitely a possibility. She became emotional. As she described the regret she has every day for letting let be spend the final moments of child E's life bathing and clothing the boy in a woolen gown. How sadistic is that? You took the life of the child and then you play like you give a damn. He was buried in that gown. Oh, a gift from the unit chosen by Lucy, she said. 
Oh, can you imagine? Your poor baby is buried in the gown that that damn devil put on him or her. Oh, man. Other families also suffered multiple tragedies since Ledby targeted three sets of twins and a set of triplets. Another mother of twins was left to grieve the loss of a son and blame herself when her family members, who had been vigilant to watch over the second infant after the first one's death, let their guard down and let be struck again, harming the boy's sister who survived. Little did we know you were waiting for us to leave so you could attack the one thing that gave us a reason to carry on in life, the mother said. The parents of triplets lost two of their babies and the third survived after being transferred to another hospital. The couple said in a video played in court that Ledby had ruined their lives. The anger and the hatred I have towards her will never go away. The father said it has destroyed me as a man and as a father. One father called Ledby the devil. Yeah, she got some demons in her. And I'm not just saying that to say it like, really, she is possessed, in my opinion. He called her the devil and said she had tricked, tried to kill his daughter twice. The nurse didn't succeed, but the girl was left behind with was left blind with brain damage and having to be fed through a tube. Mm -mm -mm. Every day I would sit there and pray. I would pray for God to save her. The father of child G said. He did. He saved her, but the devil found her. Ledby's absence, which is allowed in British courts during sentencing, fueled anger from the families of the victims who wanted her to listen to statements about the devastation caused by her crimes. Politicians and victim advocates have called for changes to the law to force criminals to appear for sentencing after several high profile convicts chose not to face their victims in recent months. British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, who called the crimes shocking and harrowing, said his government would bring forward in due course a plan to require convicts to attend their sentencing hearings. It's cowardly that people who commit such horrendous crimes do not face their victims and hear firsthand the impact that their crimes have had on them and their families and loved ones, Sunak said. Uh, also planned is an independent inquiry, inquiry into what happened at the Countess of Chester Hospital and how staff and management responded to the spike in neonatal unit deaths. However, there are calls for more formal inquiry led by a judge who could order people to testify. During Letby's 10 month trial, prosecutors said the hospital started to see in 2015, a significant rise in the number of babies who were dying or suffering sudden declines in their health for no apparent reason. Some suffered serious catastrophic collapses, but survived after getting help from medical personnel. Letty, Ledby was on duty in all of the cases, with prosecutors describing her as a constant malevolent presence in the neonatal unit when the children experienced medical distress or died. The nurse harmed babies in ways that were difficult to detect, and she persuaded colleagues that their collapses and deaths were normal, they said. Senior doctors said over the weekend that they had raised concerns about Ledby as early as 2015 and that children might have been saved if managers had taken their concerns seriously. So how do you not take the concern of a doctor seriously when there is a spike in deaths among newborn babies or babies in general? And the doctors are telling you that this woman is the common denominator but you turn and look the other way lazy and uncaring and that manager should be brought up on charges some kind of way too and if so if they can sue the hell out of her for looking the other way 
Dr. Stephen Breary, the head consultant of the Countess of Chester Hospital's neonatal unit, told the Guardian newspaper that deaths could arguably have been avoided as early as February 2016 if executives had responded appropriately to an urgent meeting request from concerned doctors. Ledby was finally removed from frontline duties in late June 2016. She was arrested at her home in July 2018. Police found records she had taken home from the hospital on babies who had collapsed. Investigators learned Ledby had performed thousands of searches online for information about the parents after the killings. They also found a note in her house that served as a chilling confession. This is what it said, you guys. I killed them on purpose because I'm not good enough to care for them, she wrote. I'm a horrible, evil person. Well, at least she knew it, huh? She knew it. She knows that she's a horrible, evil person. The mother of child C wept on the witness stand as she spoke of the loss <laughs> of her firstborn, a feisty and defenseless baby boy. She had worn her son's hand and footprints around her neck to remember him. The later realization that the person who took those prints, let be, was the same person who took his life, tainted the memory, she said. There is no sentence that will ever compare to the excruciating agony that we have suffered as a consequence of your actions, she said. At least now there is no de there is no debate that in your own words you killed them on purpose. You are evil. You did this. <sighs> I just could never ever ever imagine myself hurting a baby. Anyone. How did she get away with that? You know how? her manager looked the other way that's how mm -mm -mm. hold your babies close people what do you guys think about this what do you think about the sentence since she couldn't get the death penalty maybe she'll get some justice in prison when they find out exactly what she did let me know your thoughts in the comments